Hello. 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 I was I was wondering if this microphone was beginning to work or not. You all are an excitable bunch. How many how many of you were out here yesterday for the opening day? All right. Who's going to be playing upstairs? Who is uh, going to beat my high score in Tempest 2K on the Atari Jaguar in the courtyard later? <laughs> the only and greatest reason to own a Jaguar. <laughs> it is a, it is a uh, refined taste. Um, so my name is Chris Melisinos. I'm the guest curator for the Art of Video Games exhibition here at the Smithsonian American Art Museum. <laughs> Thank you. And of course, you all have met Georgina Goodlander, right over here. We're just waiting for a few more people to come in before we uh, start the program here. And I just want to you know, say a few things that, um, like with anything else great in life, you don't do anything this large, this big by yourself. So you can have an idea, you can have an interest, you can have something that you care about that you want to bring to the world, but you have to find like-minded people, people who have a shared passion to see things happen. And I can honestly tell you, in the past three years of working with the entire staff here at the Smithsonian American Art Museum, it's been one of the greatest of my entire career. Um, the staff is absolutely wonderful. The, the way they've engaged this and embraced this, and quite honestly, embraced in many ways a community and a genre of art that they had not ever experienced before. So I'd like to give a round of applause to everyone that helped put on this amazing exhibition. <laughs> So, I have this giant, what looks like a table here, but these are words, apparently, uh, that uh, I will be referring to throughout the conversation here. So, as we celebrate the uh, art of video games at the Smithsonian American Art Museum, it's important to consider uh, not only video games that are designed in America, but video games have an important impact on American culture, right? So, many of us that grew up in the 80s know when we first experienced Mario, first experienced <laughs> Rob the Robot, right? Um, we are very fortunate to have joining us today the Executive Vice President, Corporate Officer of Konami Digital Entertainment Company, and the Director of Kojima Productions, Hideo Kojima. Uh, Kojima-san is one of the most widely respected game designers in the world, having been named as one of Newsweek's top 10 people of 2002, and receiving the Lifetime Achievement Award at both the 2008 MTV Game Awards and the 2009 Game Developers Conference, he is widely recognized as having created the stealth action genre video games with the highly successful Metal Gear game series, which profoundly changed the landscape of storytelling in video games. In addition to the beloved Metal Gear series, Kojima-san is also the creator and director of other highly respected series, including Snatcher Police Knots, <laughs> Zone of the Enders, and Bakhtai. <laughs> so it is a privilege and an honor to have him here with us today. So please join me in welcoming to the stage Hideo Kojima and assistant producer, Sean Eyestone. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Pictures are allowed, but please silence your cell phones. Thank you. So thank you for joining us today. Um, there are a series of questions that, um, in assembling this exhibition, I was taking into consideration with regard to video games, messages that can be delivered through them, and how they become art. So uh, I want to ask you first, have you had the opportunity to tour the exhibition? Yes, a few months ago, the pre-open 
の時に見させていただきまして、えーまあ、ゲームの長い歴史、えー、ソフトとかハードを非常に分かりやすく展示されてまして、えー、中にはレアなハードもありまして非常に楽しみました。So, yes, during the opening ceremony two days ago, actually, we had the pleasure of looking around the exhibition and、uh, we saw a lot of cool games. I think it does a really good job of explaining the history behind video games. There are a lot of interesting games there, as well as old hardware, which is really great to see and it brought back a lot of memories. えー、科学とか技術とか産業とかアートいろんな、まあ、自然史も含めていろんな博物館がある中で、えー、かなりそのゲームっていうのは改めて考えると、えー、その中にクロスしているというか、まあ、総合芸術に近いのかなということで非常にこう改めてゲームの力強さというかゲームの,の中にまあ秘めた力っていうのを感じました。So of course, you know, I've had the honor of having my games、uh, displayed in exhibitions around the world. But to have it shown here at a place like the Smithsonian is truly an honor. And I think it's a very important step because Smithsonian is such a respected museum and it encompasses so many different you know,、uh, fields, including you know, art, technology, and all these various museums. So having games be a part of that, recognized as a, a sort of art form,、um, to me, I think is a very important thing and I'm very happy to be a part of that. Thank you very much. Thank you. えー、ずっと来たくてですね、今回まだ、えー、これから見ようと思いますけども、えーまあ、アポロが運んできた月の石とか、えー、チャック映画が初めて音速を超えた X1 とかですね、まあ、エノラグイの、えー、展示とかあるので、まあ、そこを楽しみにしております。And for a very long time,、uh, just the Smithsonian in general, I've been looking forward to looking at the National Air and Space Museum since I was a child. So <laughs> I'm really looking forward to going there after this is all done and、uh, taking a look at you know, some of the moon rocks about, brought back by Apollo,、uh, looking at the、uh, Enola Gay, Chuck Yeager's X1, things like that. So, yeah, I, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. So, we all have experiences of when we first saw a video game that. Was important. Can you、um, tell us a bit about your first experience with video games and what was the first game that you played? Video game is not a good thing. I was in the past, and I was in the past, and I was in the past, and I was i So,、uh, you know, when I was a child, there really weren't very many video games, but I do have memories of Pong. Maybe it was Pong, but,、uh, you know, it's, it's for a home system in Japan, so maybe it wasn't the real Pong. Maybe it was just sort of a, a Japanese game that was similar to Pong. こんなに面白いものが世の中にあるのかというので、えー、近くのスーパーに最初ありまして、えー、そこで中学生の頃かな、えー、そこでちょっとやってましたね。But I think the game that really first pulled me in and I played a lot was probably Space Invaders. And I remember seeing it first on the news, on TV, and being very impressed by it, thinking, wow, you know, this, this kind of thing actually exists. And then it came to a supermarket near my house. And、uh, when I was a junior high school student, I went there and played it a lot. であのえー、とそれ以前はですね、えーとまあ、デパートの屋上に家族で、えー、小さい時に、えー、買い物に行ってで僕とこの、まあ、兄弟だけ屋上でお金渡されてですね屋上にこうビデオゲームじゃなくてメカトロのゲームがありましてそこでずっと遊んでましたその、えー、ベルトコンベヤの上に車が走っているやつとか影で、えー、戦闘機を落とすやつとかあとは射的ゲームですけども。そういったゲームの影響の方が僕は大きいですね。But、uh, you know, if we go back a little bit further, maybe even before video games, you know, I remember as a kid、uh, when my parents would go shopping, there was a place, a department store, that on the top floor had a bunch of mechatronic arcade games, things like、uh, race cars that would run on a conveyor belt or、uh, you know, these games where you shoot down、uh, ships and it's kind of like a, a shadow play, right? And you're shooting things down.、Mm-hmm. Um, And we used to go there a lot. My parents would just give me some money, and me and my, my brother would go there and play games while my parents shopped. So you grew up playing these games.、Um, they had an impact on you. 
at what point did you decide that you wanted to make video games, and why? Specifically, were there any other forms of media that you wanted to develop in? Did you ever want to write stories, plays, movies? <笑>そうですね。えっと、ま、映画監督というか映画を作りたかった時期がありまして、え、学生時代どうやったら映画を作れるかっていうことをずっと模索してたんですけども、なかなか今みたいにインターネットがあってデジタルのツールというのはなか
戦いを繰り広げるっていうところで、えー、太陽を見た時に本当にこう嬉しくなったり心強い気持ちがあると思うんですけどそれをゲームにしたらどうなるかっていうので作ったのが僕体になりますんで、えー、物語とか世界観というよりも映画のようなシチュエーションをいかにゲームで表現するかっていうのが僕の、えー、特徴ですかね。So another example would be、uh, if you're watching a, a vampire movie, you know,、uh, and the main characters are fighting, and they have to hold off the vampires until dawn comes, right? And there's that tension there, and you're wondering, wow, are they going to make it? You know, you're waiting for the sun to rise, and when the, fine sun, the, when, when the sun finally does rise, you feel very happy and relieved when that happens. And it was that type of experience that I wanted to simulate when I created Boktai. And so、uh, that's basically how I approach my games: is not so much to look at the story or world that's presented in a movie, but to recreate those situations and those experiences. であのまあ、反省反革のテーマなんですけども、えー、僕の両親がですね、えー、1930年生まれで、えーまあ、日本で空襲とかにあってますし、えーまあ、戦争を体験しているので、えー、子どもの頃からまあそういう、えー、反戦の思想というかそういうのはずっとこう教育されてましたんで、えーまあ、僕は戦争ってコンパクトゲームを作る時に、まあ、その、まあ、親からもらったものを、まあ、ゲームで、えー、ある程度表現したいっていうことで。えー、その反戦反核というのを、えー、メタルギアでは、えー、言っています。And as for the anti-nuclear messages that are found in my games,、um, this actually goes back to my parents because my, bar- my parents were born in the 1930s and you know, they experienced the air raids on Tokyo. So you know, I got a lot of influence from them and you know, I think inherited a lot of that anti-war sentiment from them. And、uh, I, so when I went into the game industry and I started making my own games, I really want to carry over this message of you know, anti war, anti nuclear proliferation into my games. In your experience, what are some of the qualities that you believe are required to be a good game designer? First of all, I think you have to have a lot of Different interests, be interested in a lot of many things and be willing to jump in and try new things. So, say if you're walking along the street and you see a bunch of people in the middle of the street, you have to be the type of person who wants to go there and see what's going on. I think if you don't have that spirit of curiosity, then I don't think you can become a good game designer. あとはそのやっぱり、えー、とテクノロジーに依存しますので最先端の技術をいつもこう、えー、勉強しているというか興味を持って、えー、見聞きしている人は、えー、がいいと思いますね。And of course, you know, since games run on technology, I think you have to have to a certain extent an interest in technology and the latest technological trends. あとはその映像とか文学とか音楽とか芸術関係についても非常に興味があって。And I think from a creative aspect, you know, somebody who's interested in the latest visual trends, stories, music, and other artistic type of topics、uh, is probably well suited to becoming a game designer. So, you know, I think it's important to be a service guy, and I think it's important to be a service guy. I think it's important to be a service guy. えー、人をいかに喜ばすかとかこう人の、まあ、気遣い、えー、気遣いがあって、えー、それを武器に、えー、いかに喜ばせてサービスをするかっていうそういうのに、えー、こう喜びを感じる人だと思います、ね。But I think above all that, what's really important is what we call in Japan the spirit of omotenashi, which is kind of like a spirit of hospitality or the, the will, the spirit of wanting to give something to someone or share an experience with someone. So, I think it's that spirit of hospitality, of wanting to share an experience and give an experience to someone else that's very important. And to think about how you can make other people have fun and be willing to sacrifice yourself to make that fun apparent to other people. Technology to art no haike o motta, he joni oseazuki no sto, tiona game designer to toy mas. So, I think somebody who's very interested in all this technology and willing to sacrifice themselves to make other people happy, I think those are the people who are well suited to becoming a game designer. Okay. <laughs> We're talking about、uh, the, you know, the games that you've worked on. But I want you, to, if you could, to name a game、uh, other than one you developed that has had a profound impact on you and why. 
僕がこうゲームに興味を持ったのはスーパーマリオブラザーズです。まあ、これはもうこれがないと今僕ここにいませんので。Well, first of all, I just have to say that probably the most influential game on me was Super Mario Brothers. I think if that game did not exist, I probably would not be sitting here today. であのまあ、これはいつも言ってるんですけどもあのその後この業界に入って非常にこうびっくりしたゲームっていうのがあります。それアウターワールドっていうかあの現代はアナザーワールドっていうポリゴンのアドベンチャーがあったんですけどもそれが非常に、えー、びっくりしましたね。And that game would be a game called Another World, which I believe is called Out of This World here in North America. And it was a polygon based game released way back when, and、uh, that, that really impressed me a lot.、ね、Is there anyone in the audience who's played it? Oh. I don't know. 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 I d o えー、インタラクティブなんですけども作った人の思想感というのは非常に分かるような、えー、今までになかったゲームなので僕もそういうのを作ろうということで、まあ、かなり影響を受けましたね。So I think what it did is it really did a great job of conveying the creator's style, his will and his artistic sense and that aesthetic value、um, through all parts of the game, you know, from the aesthetics to even just you know, the type of gimmicks and puzzles that were in the game. I think he did a great job of conveying that message to the player, and that really influenced me a lot, made me want to create a game that was similar to that. Some artists struggle having to balance the commercial interest with their creative desires.、Um, how do you maintain this balance and make sure your games are yours instead of, you know? Wanting to come out、uh, from a business objective. I don't know. 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 I d o n 思い通りになるような現場とか環境とか、えー、組織を作らないとダメなのでいいものを作るためにプロデューサーをすると、えー、それがまあ一番近道だと思います。But I think in order to create something great, something truly great, you have to create the environment that allows you to, do, to create freely. And、uh, to, in order to accomplish that, I decided that I had to become a producer and that becoming a producer would allow me to create the games that I want to create. MGS1 以前は僕はプロデューサーではなかったので発売日がいつなのかとかスタッフを雇う権利もなくてですねバジェットの管理もできてなかったのでやっぱりその、まあ、熱意だけではいいもの作れないんですね。So, you know, prior to MGS1, you know, I wasn't a producer, so I was very bound by you know, dates and budgets. You know, I had no control over hiring people, I couldn't control the budget. Uh, a lot of times I didn't really know where the, the deadlines came from, so you know, I, I really didn't have that power to do what I wanted to do. So, you know, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a lot of things, and I'm going to do a lot of things. I'm going to do a lot of things, and I'm going to do a lot of things. I'm going to do a lot of things, and I'm going to do a lot of things. So, I think there may be a lot of people here in the audience who maybe want to. Produce a creative type of、uh, you know, occupation, whether it's games or something else. And I think if you have a great supportive producer there who can encourage you and bring that creative creativity out of you, that's great. But if there isn't a person like that, then I think really it's up to you to really take the leadership, go out there and become a producer yourself. And produce まあ、いやいやとは言いませんけど、いいものを作るためにプロデューサーとしながら、しかもビジネスもしていると、えー、結果的にはそのバランスというよりも、ものづくりができるって、えー、っていうか、ものづくりができることが一番最優先なので、えー、ものづくりをするためにプロデュースをし、プロデュースをするためにビジネスをしているという、この優先順位は僕の中では変えたくないというか、それがあるからゲームを作れるというか、えー、精神的なバランスを保てるということになります。
So, but then of course, you know, in order to become a producer and maintain your position as a producer, you have to know business and you have to look at the business aspects, keep multiple lines of things running at once. You have to be very organized, you know, keep track of the budgets and whatnot. So I think it's very important to have that skill. But, you know, what I want to emphasize though is that that role as a producer, you know, that's only to facilitate creativity. So creativity and creation is always priority number one. Then pr I become a producer to support that creative endeavor in order to, pr to support my role as a producer. I have to study business, but priority is always on creation. In 2006, um, you likened your role as a game designer as to someone who runs a museum. <laughs> <laughs> your game, acting as that museum, contains the art that you create, lighting, the placement of objects, um, but the video game itself is not art as art should radiate the designer. Um, I believe that video games are an art form due to the three voices that are present um, when games become art through the author, the game mechanics, and the player themselves. Do you still share the same position that you did in 2006? <laughs> you know, honestly, I don't remember uh, exactly what I said in 2006. <laughs> <laughs> シミソニア博物館で展示をしていただいてアートではないとは言えないんですけどもあの先ほど言いましたけど科学とか技術とか産業とかアートとか自然史とかを含めた博物館ですよねでそういうことで言うとゲームっていうのはそのほとんどその
Well, video games continue to be a significant role culturally in society. えっとですね、あのまあ、インタラクティブなエンターテインメントというのはですね、あとそのまあゲームっていうのはそのえ最先端の技術を取り込んでえどんどんどんどん進化していきますので、技術の進化というのも問わらないわけなので、そこと共にどんどんどんどん成長していくと思います。And あの、エボルーショナリーステップのテクノロジー、あ、ビリーブダイトイルオーソビカムマッチワイダーインソサイティ、ユノ、インパクトアロットモーエリアズオブソサイティ。そう、ウィルユーズイットイングズライクメイビ
in a way, I, I, I think it's kind of come full circle, and I feel like, to a certain extent, it's kind of like, uh, I don't know if you could say destiny is a little bit too much, but you know, it feels like something very special to me. あのまあ、僕、26年前にゲームのこの業界に入ったんですけども、えー、その頃はですね、えー、ゲームは喋らず、えー、ビープ音で、えー、16色ぐらいでしたね。So, you know, I entered this industry about 26 years ago now, and when I first entered, you know, of course,、uh, games were very simple. It was like 16 colors, and sounds were just these simple beeps. あの、まあ、映画が撮りたかったんですけど、まあ、映画を諦めてゲーム業界に。入ったんですけども、えー、なのでその、まあ、自分の中ではいつかは映画を超えるような表現力をゲームが身につけるのではないかとはずっと願ってましたけどもこんなに早く来るとはあの思ってもいませんでした。But you know, I quit my, my goal of becoming a movie director and entered the game industry based on this very, very simplistic games at the time. And you know, I always been hoping, looking forward to the day when games can mature and become this expressive art form, this expressive medium that can actually compete with movies on that level. And、uh, to be quite honest, I never expected to come to this point so quickly.、Um, but you know, I'm very happy that it finally has come to this day, and because it's something that you know I've been looking forward to, and it's the reason why I entered the industry in the first place. This next question is from Michael O'Hara. So, all of your games are a cinematic experience. Would you ever consider directing, writing an actual movie of your own? Or do you feel that to achieve a truly realized story such as Metal Gear Solid games, it is best done through video games? I don't know. 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 So, you know, honestly, I'm, I'm a movie fan, so you know, it's very special to me, and I honestly would love to make a movie someday.、Um, but you know, that said, you know, I think it has to be a certain special game that has to provide that right setting. So, someday, maybe. I'm not sure that Metal Gear Solid is a game that is not a game that is 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 a 映画に最適なストーリーとか世界観とかキャラクターを作ると思いますので、メタルギアソリッドとはかなり違うようなものになると思います。But I don't think that game would be Metal Gear Solid. And the reason why is that Metal Gear, Sto- Metal Gear Solid was developed specifically to become a game. You know, it has a specific worldview and story that's well suited and optimized for a game. And in my mind, Metal Gear Solid is a game and nothing else. So, I think if I were to create something that would become a movie, I'd have to come up with a new type of story, new characters, something that's better suited to the medium of movies. I think that Metal Gear Solid is a live action movie. I think that's a good thing. 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 I'm sure maybe a lot of people here actually were. Hoping to hear that, I would say, yes, I'm going to make a Metal Gear Solid movie.、Uh, <laughs> but you know, even if that were to happen, I just want to make it clear that I think if it were to be made into a movie, it would have to be something completely new.、Uh, and I wouldn't use my current scripts. I think I'd have to get somebody to write a new script, get somebody else to direct it、um, as a movie. I think that the movie is a movie. I think that the movie is a movie. I think that the movie is a movie. 近々というか、えー、いずれ発表できると思いますので、えーまあ、あんまり言えないですね。はい、あの期待して待っててください。はい、And、uh, you know, this is a question I get asked a lot.、Uh, you know, are you going to make a movie? And、uh, this is always something in the back of my mind, so I'm always thinking about it. And、uh, I can't really say too much right now, but you know, I'm working on something, and I hope in the near future I'll have something to announce. If you could,、oh, so this、uh, next question comes from Burke Eisel. If you could say that you identify most with any of the characters in the Metal Gear Solid series, <laughs> which character would it be and why? <laughs> and Snake is sitting right here in the front row. It's a very different thing. It's a very different thing. It's a very different thing. You know, honestly, I, when I've asked, asked this question, I think I answer it differently every time.、Uh, I, I got asked this yesterday, and I think I answered Otacon. Today, I'm going to 
スネークさんいますんで。But since we have Snake here today,、um, out of respect for that, I'll say Snake. The reason is that the Snake is a very hard to do. The Snake is a very hard to do. The Snake is a very hard to do. And、uh, so I'll explain some of the reasons why, but just to give you some history, you know, when Snake was first introduced as part of the original Metal Gear, you know, he didn't speak at all. You know, it was, it was a game where characters had no voices, he was just a very silent character.、Um, but now that you know, we have sound in games, you know, he's kind of become this very talkative kind of character. <laughs> Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3, the face was not in the one, 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 the face was not Then, you know, the next step, of course, was when we went from PlayStation 1 to PlayStation 2. Not only could he speak, but now he could do facial expressions and express emotion. And so that became the next step in his evolution. So, how do you think video games enable richer storytelling?、Um, what are the key aspects you feel are important to a gameplay driven narrative? Action game, the story of 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 the story. Well, first of all, I want to say that introducing story into an action game is a very difficult task. And I think it's something that a lot of game creators struggle with. It's not easy to take a story and put that into an action setting where the player is able to interact with that action. You know, and I think、uh, a lot of game creators still struggle with that balance. But, so to say, it's not easy to do it. 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 But that said, I think even if it is difficult, you know, the payoff is much greater because, unlike movies or novels where you're just looking on as, as an observer, with games you're interacting with the character. So that level of immersion is completely different. And I think you know, you're able to express things that you can't express in other mediums. So, the fiction of the VR, 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 the えー Narrative aspect in my games moving forward. まあ、あのアクションでいうとそのプレイヤーの自由度っていうのは重要なんですけども、えー、プレイヤーと自分が乖離すると、えー、そこで切り離されてしまいますので自分がその世界の中で全ての行動を決定してるっていうのを、えー、常に、えー、思わせながらストーリーを進めていければ、えー、他のメディアにもはるかあのはるかにですねこう、えー、すごいことができる。えーまあ、そのメディアだと思ってますので
えー、そういうことを踏まえて今、新しいゲームを作っています。ちょうどそれを今、そのゲームを作ってて。えー、こと言われてますけど、えー、それはそれなりに理由があったんですけども、えー、今後作るものに関してはなるべくそういうのはなくて、えー、自由に自分で行動しながらも、えー、ストーリーを、えー、自由に、えー、こう自分の中で処理していくようなそういう実験を今しております。Moving forward, I'm experimenting with new ways of telling a story. And you know, with my next game, I think maybe you can expect a, a, few, a little less on, of the cutscenes.、Um, but that said, there still will be a narrative, <laughs> and I'm experimenting with a way of telling a story in a way that's free. So you'll still be able to experience that story, but you'll do it, you'll control the pacing, and it will be free.、And、that's what I'm experimenting with right now for my next project. This next question is from Eli Friedberg and Friends. So, this is, I'm going to condense this a little. I'll make it a little shorter.、Um, so, the Metal Gear series often has so many references to American pop culture, history, and politics. The earliest games were focused on nuclear weapons, then genetics and cloning,、um, and most recently, the concept of information technology taking over the world. Historical references such as Cuban Missile Crisis and the Iran Contra scandal, pop culture references such as Rambo, Blade Runner, Lethal Weapon. What is it that fascinates you about Western history and politics, and where did it begin?、えーね、my childhood was the TV show, the American drama, the American television show, the variety show, the TV 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 show, You know, I was raised under the influence of Western culture because whenever you turned on the TV, there'd be some kind of you know, American TV show or Western drama or maybe a cooking show or a variety show. You know, so even though I was living in Japan, you know, I was constantly exposed to Western culture. なんでその、まあ、日本の文化も吸収はしてましたけれども、えー、半分以上はその日本じゃない国の世界中の、えー、音楽とか小説とか映画とか舞台とか含めて。えー、それを普段から吸収してましたんで、えー、ふ普通にこう自然に出てくるものがそれがこうミックスされた、えー、ちょっと無国籍な感じのものになっているのではないかと思います。And so, you know, of course, I was also influenced by Japanese culture, but I'd say that more than half of the influences that I got were from outside of Japan. And、uh, you know, things like、uh, movies or music, you know, these things I got from outside of Japan and it kind of got processed within my mind. And、uh, I think you know, because of that, you know, my, my sense is not so much as someone who's Japanese, but it's maybe a little more international, something that doesn't belong to any particular nationality. I was going to say that 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 I was going to say that. スケールのでかい話とかスケールのでかいゲームを作りたいので、えー、そのアメリカを舞台に、えー、書くとかを、えー、テーマにしています。As far as why I set my games in America or other countries, you know, really the reason for that is I want to tell a grand story, something really big. And I think if I set it in a small country like Japan, that'd be hard to do. So because I want to tell this really epic story, you know, I didn't want to limit myself to a certain setting. So that's why I, I looked. Abroad and looked at things like America, and so I could tell this really grand epic story. America, the TV and the TV, 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 And、uh, you know, all these various TV shows. So, you know, there are three things I think that really influenced me. You know, there's like uh, detective shows, uh, sci fi shows, and、uh, I think all those things really had a great profound impact on me. 
<laughs> so uh, there was a detective murder mystery. I think that was very, very influential on me. Uh, and he wanted to actually become a part of the murder investigation units in the LAPD when he was a kid. <laughs> So, you know, if you look at most Japanese kids, I think, you know, they want to become a Japanese police officer. But for me, I want to become a part of the, you know, American Highway Patrol and uh, <laughs> become part of CHIPS. So, yeah, that was, that was, that was me. <laughs> this next question is from Min Cho. And this will be our last question. What, I know. <laughs> what has been your shining moment of accomplishment in 25 years of Metal Gear? Small question. <laughs> Big answer. <laughs> it's, it's hard to answer that question, you know, judging by myself, like what's a shining moment? <laughs> プレイステーションの so, you know, in the early days, you know, I did have some very hardcore fans, but Metal Gear kind of existed in the shadows, and I was a game creator who worked mostly on, you know, these lesser-known hardware platforms, you know, personal computers, so it wasn't really a huge international hit. え、そこからは大きく変わりました。あの、え、期限前、期限後みたいな感じで、え、それ以前とはもう全然生活というかその周りの僕を見る感じが変わりました。And so, you know, however, with the debut of Metal Gear Solid 1, I think that was really the point where everything changed and uh, you know, it became an international success. My name became known in North America, Europe, Asia, all over the world. And I think it really uh, it's not saying I, th I think it's really the start of a new era for me in my life. Um, I, can, I can say it's like you know looking at you know BC versus AD in my life. It was that much of a transition for me. James Cameron got Terminator.公開して次の日にもう生活変わったみたいな。日本のインディーズの監督だった僕が突然ハリウッド映画のデビューしたみたいなそんな感じでしたあの頃は。so it's like, you know, James Cameron comes out with a Terminator and next, you know, the next day he's this big Hollywood guy, you know. So I think for me it was like that, you know, it's like I went from being an Indies Japanese movie creator to suddenly becoming this guy who's in the limelight, you know, in, in the Hollywood big leagues. So it, it's really an honor. ま、and so, you know, this year marks the 25th anniversary of Metal Gear. And I think, you know, it's a very important time. And I want to really make this year, this is the 25th anniversary, this 25th year, one of the best years for me. And I think, you know, this year, next year, I can't really say too much, but I'm working on something that I think will become the shining mo moment, the shining point in my career. You know, and uh, I'm going to be 50 next year. So I think while I'm still in my 40s, I want to do something. I want to make something that will be the best moment in my life. まあ、こんだけ言いながらも次回作のことはちょっと今日は言いませんけど、え、想像していただけるとなんとなくわかるかなと思います。And uh, unfortunately I can't give more detail than that regarding my next project, but I hope you all kind of use your imagination and and it could just kind of know that I'm working on something. So please look forward to it.
And um, so what I would like to say that it has been an honor to have you here to be part of this exhibition that has taken, you know, three years of, of work and love on behalf of the people putting it together, one that I've been waiting my whole life for. And so I would like to present you as well with um, a copy of the book that represents the exhibition and your amazing contribution to us and to the world. So I thank you so much. Thank you. From Pac-Man to Mass Effect. Yeah. Thank you. Excellent. Metal Gear's in there. <laughs> He's looking for it. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Maybe come in. Come in. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. Sean? Thank you. <laughs> Alarm. Um, so I think um, that is the end of, uh, of this panel session. Everyone is staying. Um, I think um, maybe we have time, if uh, time permits, for... Uh, um, yes. Please touch. Excellent. <laughs> For Mr. Kojima to either take uh, photographs or to uh, sign some autographs, or take photographs or sign autographs, but we would ask that you do not come up onto the stage, that you try to form a line, and we will get to as many as we can in the time we have. So, thank you. Be very nice. Be very nice. That was great. Oh, a little bit of a stumble there, but... No, see, but it's perfect because...